Welcome to this episode of DDB Talks, our video series featuring the brightest minds, most interesting stories and tales of unexpected works from around the world. I'm Lindsay Bennett and today I'm joined by Alison Weisbroth, the US editor of Campaign, and Justin Thomas Copeland, the CEO and president of DDB North America. Alison is an award-winning journalist covering all things advertising over at Campaign and was previously at Ad Exchanger. Justin Thomas Copeland has been in the role at DDB for just over a year, joining from OPMG Health and tasked with leading the transformation of the North America region. It's lovely to have you both. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. So, Justin, I'm really excited to talk to you today about all things DDB. Um, I know you just entered into the role about a year ago. So t- what's your first year been like as CEO um, of North America? What are you most excited about, proud of achieving, etc.? Excellent. Well, first of all, thanks for the uh, this exchange for the time, uh, the conversation. I'll thank you forward for that. Um, yeah, it's been just over a year. It's been a fantastic year. It's been everything that I thought it would be. Um, I came into the role with a very open mind and open spirit uh, and the right energy uh, really to learn and listen. And I think we've had, you know, we've made great progress. We've had a great year. Um, A couple of things I'm really proud about. Um, I'm I'm all about the team. I'm all about people. I believe in, you know, people, products and then profit. I think they look after each other in that order. Um, One of the things I, the first things I did was to look at the North American leadership team and look at how and where we could refresh that. I felt that we needed um, you know, to bring some new energy, some new perspectives uh, to that team. So just some call outs. Um, we've hired in um, a few key people. Nikki uh, Lambert is our global head of diversity and I brought her into the region. Um, and that was because we wanted to make sure that as we were rebuilding the region, diversity, equity and inclusion was gonna be part of everything we did. We didn't want it to be sort of a side uh, project or a side function. We wanted it to be inherent in how the region was going to be, you know, reformed and reimagined. So that was really, really important. Um, Since then, we brought in Natalia Schultz as our chief people officer. So Natalia and Nikki sort of do a a yin and yang. They have a strategic partnership to make sure that as we're looking after our people and talent strategy, again, DNI is flushed through that. Um, Natalia has adopted another one of our things that we're proud of, um, which is a a strategy we called No Duplicates. And that was really to set the tone of how we wanted to not just find new people with new skills that could be additive to DDB, but also when we have people that become part of the family, how do you keep them? How do you make them feel that they're an individual and special? So even the way that we develop them and train them um, and just have a trajectory for them, we wanted that to be a No Duplicates approach as well. So not cookie cutter in, um, but really as much as we can, as much as is practical, giving people a feel that they can be themselves and grow into the person that they want to be. Um, so that was really important. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that we've kept on that. Um, Elaine Purcell has come in as our chief growth officer and restarted our growth engine. Critical. Um, you know, we've won 18 new assignments since uh, I started the 1st of uh, August last year uh, with some fantastic brands, um, including brands like, you know, um, JetBlue, Uber, Aflac, um, you know, additional assignments as well from some of our existing business, uh, from the likes of Kroger, for example, where we've gone back to clients and given them a new flavor of DDB because there's nothing like just taking your new self to market um, and just sort of bring in some of the new capabilities and new thinking that you have to clients, to senior clients. So I'm proud of that. Um, you know, we also brought in Andrea. Um, DKS to be CEO of our Chicago office. Massive move. It's a big, it's our biggest office in the region. Uh, we waited nearly a year to find the right person. Um, and Andrea is definitely the right person. And similarly in New York, uh, we brought Dala Price in uh, to be the president of our New York office. Um, and then I would also add in Jatinder Singh, who's coming as our chief data officer, who's trying to marry and help us marry insights and fuel our creativity with more insights. Uh, we were passionate about bringing our creativity to more spaces and places. And I'm proud that we've started to do that across a number of clients. So a mouthful, a long response, but um, all about the people. It all starts and ends with the people. So I'm really proud about the team that yeah. we're building to make it. Yeah, it's been a busy year for you. Um, and I definitely, you know, talent is is such a top of mind topic right now. And 
Um, it seems like you're you're really focused on that in the region and listening to your response. It seems like there was a lot of, you know, repositioning, uh, new people being brought in, new new business engine revving up. Talk about like what what was needed strategically. I know you repositioned around this unexpected works in terms of the creativity, but talk about like where DDB is now as opposed to where it was a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, I think for me anyway, um, and for many of us, unexpected works is like a mindset. It's a philosophy as much as a positioning. It's how we should see the world. Um, it's how we should think about creativity being the unlock and, you know, not taking those tried and tested routes, but really testing ourselves to come to clients with new types of solutions um, and new expressions of creativity. And for me, Unexpected Works was a platform that I used to take creativity across our client's enterprise in ways that were right for the client. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's been you know really fundamental to how we've, as a team, come together because it's allowed us to have a common language and a common North Star. Um, you know, we, we're focused on becoming future forward and really driving creative solutions to our clients. You've got to lead clients now. Um, and it's been a great sort of engine for us all to understand that You've got to step to our clients differently. You've got to give them something they're not expecting from DDB. Um, and that's been critical, I think, to get us energized and re-energized. It's also been critical to get new conversations with clients at the C-suite. Uh, we've, you know, we've gone back and re-looked at all of our client relationships um, and gone into all of our most senior offices, client offices, uh, with a very proactive, very confident view of where we're taking DDB. So we've done that with clients like State Farm, uh, where we do a lot of their sort of um, middle funnel and acquisition work. Uh, we've continued to do big brand building ideas with the likes of Molson. Um, and so we've had, you know, fantastic campaigns for Molson, uh, Molson Cause and helping their business for both Miller Lite and Cause Lite. Um, so we're operating and we're, we're being unexpected and bringing that to life because we're operating across the full spectrum. Um, you know, we don't discriminate. We talk a lot about our creativity coming to these new spaces and places. Um, and also, I would just say that clients need to also internally be bring a bit of the unexpected to their respective boards. The mm -hmm. accountability that our CMOs have, um, the pressures that the CEOs are under, the market forces and the speed of market changes um, are such that, you know, they've also got to be bringing the unexpected and be surprising and delighting internally. So it's also been a good bridge for us with our clients because we're thinking in the same way. And we share that share, you know, we have that shared accountability. Um, and so there are a number of clients we've done that for Aflac as well. I would I would um, quote where we were fortunate enough to be given additional assignments after the first pitch win last year. They've just kept with us because they like what they saw. Um, you know, Uber was very much in that vein as well. So and we're doing different types of work, um, and that's all bringing the unexpected works proposition to life. But like I said, it's got to be a mindset. You've got to be thinking like that. And you've got to really believe that creativity is the biggest force in business. Um, that is the differentiator. It is the unlock. Um, and we're just getting really comfort confident, um, but never comfortable in how we bring that to clients. Do you find that with this unexpected works positioning and or mindset and, and thinking about, um, you know, ways that you can show up unexpectedly for your clients? Is there more opportunity now with existing clients to go organically in different ways, or do you see new business as still like the big opportunity, or is it a balance? I think it's always a balance. I would say that the new business market is on fire at the moment. Um, you know, there's a lot of activity. I think what was probably happening were people were waiting for the new normal, and then I think brands realized that, you know, we just got to get going. Um, there's no like starting line for that. And I think when that happened, because there had been a bit of a lull of activity uh, in 2020, it was a perfect opportunity for many brands to say, you know what, rather than just doing what we've always done and just kicking the restart, why don't we just have a fresh look? And I think that, you know, that's what's really contributed to the new business market being on fire. But it's always a balance. So you always have to be making sure that the back door is closed and that your existing clients are feeling the love and getting the service. I believe fully in that. Um, and so you need teams that are balanced in their outlook, that are thinking about net new as well as um, you know, existing clients. And they're thinking about where they can win and making choiceful strategic decisions. Um, I don't think it's one or the other, although I will say that our net new business activity has definitely increased 
you know, if we've won 18 new clients in the last 14 months, we've been active. Um, but what I'm really proud about is that we've not lost any clients uh, this year. And that in and itself, with so much, so many clients having to rethink and reviewing what they currently do with their agencies, for us to be able to say across North America, we've not lost any clients this year, I'm super proud of the team um, at that because that's that's not easy. That's awesome. And so speaking, thinking about talent now, um, you mentioned, you know, you've won 18 new clients. You obviously have to staff up for that kind of growth and we're facing a very tight labor market. So what are you doing right now to attract talent to the organization? And then we can talk a little bit about retention and, and how that fits into inclusion and de and I. Yeah. I mean, it's really tough out there. I mean, just a moment of pause and self-realization, like it is tough for everyone. Um, we've all got friends across the industry, client and agency side, um, and we ask the question and we compare notes, um, you know, in an ethical way, of course. Um, and everyone says it's really tough, right? Um, I think part of what we're doing is we're leveraging the power of DDB. Uh, we are, a, you know, a legendary uh, creative agency and, you know, the creative industry is really sort of enticing a lot of the the energy that we see in the marketplace people want to be creative they want to express themselves why shouldn't ddb be on their consideration list but to your question you can't just plug and play like you always did so we've had to move our brand to new places so new partnerships new initiatives um, making sure that we are literally mobilizing mobilizing our brands to be in different forums where recruitment activities happening or talent activities happening or there's an opportunity for us to spot talent so we go to certain conversations with an IO. Can we procure, you know, five or six names of people who we really like the sound of? It could be an award show, for example. It could be an exposition, an expose. Um, and so we're using all these different tactics, uh, you know, and it's a new playbook. So again, the no duplicates comes to life again because we're not just phoning up those recruiters that we always did and expecting them to fill all of our gaps. We've also got to put some of our own skin in the game. Um, also things like pipelining. Uh, we've got a pipeline much better. Uh, so we've got to make sure that our leaders are pipelining. They're looking and talking to talent. You may not be in market today, but in six months you may well be. And let's make sure that we have a touch with you, that we're going to be on your consideration set um, in six months time. We've got to do that systematically. So those are just a few of the new things that we're doing in order to continue to procure the top talent and the best talent and making sure that, you know, that nourishes our brand. Right. I mean, we are owners of the DDB brand. We have to understand what it means to to really live a brand. And that's part of living a brand where you take it to market and you make sure that people have interest and you maintain that interest. So we're doing a lot of that, a lot of new things. Yeah. yeah. So attraction is one piece. And then there's retention, right? Which obviously there's been so much conversation, especially in the past year about diversity in the industry, how, you know, BIPOC talent doesn't necessarily feel included or welcome. As a black CEO of a major agency network, what is your unique perspective or your opportunity to advance uh, inclusion at DDB? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, look, I think that word inclusion for me personally and part of my journey um, is is the word. I think it's, you know, inclusion, belonging. Um, it's quite, it's not easy, but it's, it, it's, it's doable to have a diverse agency, a diverse workforce, you can get that, but you cannot, you know, you cannot foster that feeling of belonging and inclusion. That just has to be something that is felt really organically by individuals. Um, and, and I'll say that I don't know if I have a unique perspective, but being in this industry for only 30 years, there were times when, you know, I just was, did not feel like I was, you know, I was belonging to any sort of set um, and, and I worked out and figured out in the way that was right for me, how I would get through that. So I can't sort of project that onto people, you know, because sometimes you can be in these positions and you start to project yourself and I did it this way. And, and that's not the, I don't, I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is real empathy, really listening. I think it's really, um, making DDB in North America, look in the mirror and say, okay, where could we be much more inclusive? Where does our culture exclude people? You know, not because it's by design, but because, you know, it's DDB. There's maybe some ways that we do things or ways ways that we talk or the shorthand that we have. When you're bringing in new people who are not used to that, that could be the switch off button and you don't even know it. So being really self-aware to make sure that people feel they're getting consistent feedback, 
Um, there's mentoring and reverse mentoring as well. Uh, there's no reason why an account director, an account manager, account supervisor couldn't mentor me um, about leadership and what they expect from a leader like me. So it's not a hierarchical thing. Um, I think it's looking at how people are developing in ways that are right for them, passion projects, uh, creating space for that. Um, I think it's also understanding that there is a new sort of return to office now is happening and how do you create the working conditions that are right for people? Um, because, you know, it's been nearly two years. So people have adapted their whole lives around this new way of showing up for work. And sometimes it's not so easy to undo that, right? So I think these are all things from a retention standpoint um, that we are just being as honest and as open as we can, that we don't have all the answers, but we do want to create that environment where people feel they can belong. And part of that is also calling it when you see it, and it's not right, uh, you've got to call it. And the last thing I'll say on retention is, we have um, what we call the four freedoms at DDB. Um, you know, freedom from fear, freedom from chaos, um, you know, uh, freedom to be, um, and freedom to fail. And these freedoms are really important. They were, you know, scribed over two decades ago, but we feel they're as important, if not more important today than they were, even the day they were written. And we're bringing things like that back to be central to our culture, but not as a you must and you are free and you're proclaiming and projecting, but it's more about the behaviors that we as leaders, and whether I'm a black leader or a female leader or a white male leader, it doesn't matter. As a leader, these are the kinds of behaviors that we wanna show that we believe in and we hold our teams accountable to. And I think that's gonna help retention because people will see us doing rather than just talking. Everyone can talk in advertising. Uh, you know, it's what you do that makes a difference. So we're trying to also move things on in that sense to keep people. Yeah, no, for sure. Action is, is critical. You mentioned return to the office, which I'm sure is top of mind for everybody at your organization right now. How are you navigating that? How are you returning to the office in a more inclusive and better, more positive way? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, look, it's first of all, I hope everyone's safe out there, the pandemic. Um, we still have to navigate it. We still have to be mindful of it um, as things are evolving and opening up. Um, you know, North America has got, you know, we've got five or six different offices. There are different stipulations, local stipulations, state stipulations that we need to be mindful of. More than that, though, is how people feel, right? Um, and so we're trying to you know, we, we actually said we're now open for a flexible model where people are coming in two to three days a week um, and, and work with your line managers and in your teams of how that really works for you and your teams, right? So we will enable that from a central standpoint, but it will be executed in a way that's right for, for the teams in the offices. We feel that's really important because the dynamics are super local and super personal. Um, you know, we love being back together. We had a town hall last week. Uh, we had, uh, we were, by the way, I should say this, uh, you know, social distance compliant and, you know, regulations compliant, but we had, you know, a number of people in the same room and there were sort of like jokes and laughing and people taking, making fun of what I was wearing and stuff like that. And our global CEO and his uh, inability to dance cool and just a bunch of stuff that was happening that you just don't get if you're on screens, it's just difficult. Um, and we just love being together. So, you know, that's my preference, but I can't project that on everyone. I, but a lot of our teams, they want to be back. They just want to do it in a way that's safe. Um, and they also want to make sure that the worlds that they've constructed during the pandemic, they have the time um, and our empathy to sort of undo some of that or change it and pivot it so that they can be back in the office two, two three days a week. Um, and we can learn together and, you know, laugh together and create together. I mean, that's a big part of our industry and you know we don't want to lose that you know yeah for sure so as as you head back to the office like what does the creative workspace of the future look like everyone talks about you know more bean bags and open collaborative spaces like what's what are you envisioning yeah man that was <laughs> going to be my answer bean bags and sandals and you know <laughs> I, I tell you something it is a real consideration though right um the space i mean I hope it becomes much more of a making space, right? Um, I hope that when people come in, not that they weren't before, but you know, they're coming in with purpose to make something, develop something, co-create something. So I think 
you know, for us, it's about a mixture of sometimes you want to be having enough space to do things on your own. So we've got to make sure that people have got, you know, the, the physical space to sort of lock themselves away and, you know, focus and problem solve and bring that to the wider group. Um, I think the, the wider group and the dynamic and having space for the wider group to co-create, that's really important. Um, I think we need some scrappy places in an office where it doesn't look polished in Madison Ave. It looks a bit like, you know, workshop and uh, work in progress, because I think that's also a creative environment always has that. So I think you need different flavors and different energies in the physical space um, and use the space ultimately as kind of a making co-creating space. Um, and that could be strategy as well as physical themes that we're making for clients. Um, but that's what I hope it becomes. Uh, a much less, you know, rows and rows of people with heads down and laptops up and sort of, you know, a, a bit of noise, bit of music, bit of scrappiness. Um, I, I'm, I'm all for that. Cool. Um, so what are you most excited about for, for DDB in North America as we head into next year? What's, what's top of mind for you? Uh, I'm excited about our product. It's all about creativity and our product. Uh, if we are not showing up in those new spaces and places with new manifestations of our creativity, um, then you know that we've got a problem. So we're already doing that. I'm excited about that. Um, I'm excited about you know clients waking up to the Evolve DDB. Um, they love us. They love our creativity. They want it in more spaces. I want to see us take it across the enterprise, right? Um, you know, we've got a great uh, Marcoms team that's helping us take our brand to market and represent our brand voice. Uh, you know, we've got people like Donna Tobin who's come in and she's amazing and just got great energy, is helping us with our narratives. And, you know, we have obviously Lindsay, uh, you know, our global head of marketing. We have also really invested and focused on social media activation uh, and a content strategy underneath that. I'm excited about that coming to life because, you know, again, we're, we're ambassadors of the brand and we spend so many hours telling clients what to do, but now we're walking the walk about our own brand. And I'm truly excited about that because I think that's going to be a great driver of growth and interest for DDB. Um, I'm excited about the organic growth opportunities that we see across our clients. Um, I won't read you the Rolodex of our clients, but we've got some fantastic brands and they want brand building and they want brand experience and they want sort of product innovation and platform innovation. Um, and, you know, they want to win as well. They want conversion. So they're looking at us to say, where can creativity play in this? And we're saying it can play everywhere, um, whether it's Kroger, Mars, um, you know, clients like Solomon, uh, State Farm, iShares, um, many of these, you know, Unilever, we won awards this year. We want to continue to do that um, and organically grow with our clients, not just grow our clients, but grow with them as they look at their business in new ways. That's really exciting. Um, and then sort of the whole world of insight development using data. Uh, to unleash creativity in new spaces and places. Um, you know, that's really exciting. Um, we're not going to try and mimic um, anyone sort of technology platforms or try and be a data agency. We're a creative business. We're a creative agency. But they're just more inputs that we can use and more outputs where our creativity can shine. And then just outcomes being really accountable for business outcomes. So that's those are some of the big things that I'm excited about. Um, again, a lot in my answer. My apologies. And maybe just to finish with the network to say with the global DDB network um, is really exciting for scale and opportunity. Um, I love working uh, across the, the regions and with Marty at Global. So doing more of that is really exciting. Awesome. Well, sounds like you got a lot to look forward to. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me, Justin, and hope to see you soon. Likewise. Thank you.